It was outstanding. I mean, you talked about China, the largest navy in the world, 355 ships and submarines. Its naval battle force has more than tripled in size in two decades. You spelt that out. In four years, China has built new naval vessels, new ones, equivalent in tonnage to the entire Royal Australian Navy fleet. And they've done that every 18 months. Its Coast Guard has doubled from 60 to 130 1,000 tonne ships in a decade. They've got a maritime, you spelt this out, militia, that's got 300 vessels operating in the Spratly Islands. China claims to own them, but Taiwan and Vietnam and the Philippines have also laid claims to all of that. Peter, you then said over the next day, decade, China's nuclear warhead stockpile, estimated to be in the 200s last year, is projected to reach between 700 and 1,000 warheads, and this was the point, quote, every major city in Australia, including Hobart, is within range of these missiles. Peter, how many people are listening to the warning? I think more and more are, Alan. I think the pennies dropped for a lot of Australians. And I think people realise that under President Xi, China is headed in a very different direction. It's a very different country. And we can keep our head in the sand or we can stand up and really honour the values that troops have fought for to protect our country and to defend us as a nation over generations. My argument is that uh, we, we stand with those that have kept our country safe over generations and that have shed blood for our country. They have uh, fought and defended and protected uh, our values and who we are as a people. And now is not a time for our country to cower. We can't be in the 1930s in an appeasement phase mm. and pretending that nothing is happening. We mm. need to call out any acts of aggression, mm. the acts of foreign interference and coercion. And if we do that, if we stand strong as a country, not just within our own region, but within our allies, the United States, United Kingdom, India, Japan, others, as you point out, then I do think we can change the course otherwise. Yes, but I mean, as you say, no, I mean, all this focus has been on the Solomon Islands, but you made the point in that speech, China have established 20 outposts in the South China Sea. They rejected The Hague's permanent Court of Arbitration verdict in 2016 on claims to the historic rights of the South China Sea, but China ignores the ruling. They've increased the number of military jets in Taiwan's air defence identification zone. They've used militia crewed fishing vessels to intrude into the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. They've imposed this national security law on Hong Kong, so doing away with the one country, two systems. And then, of course, the tariffs and bans on all of us. I mean, it's a litany of concern, isn't it? Well, it is, Alan. And I think uh, when you look at what the government's been able to invest in defence, about $270 billion over this decade, we increase our investment, the number of people that we have. And I think that sends a very clear message to the Australian people that we are on a different path as a government than Labor was. I mean, Labor stripped back funding to defence to 1.56% of GDP, the lowest level since 1938. I'd love to be commissioning a submarine or a frigate that Labor commissioned that Kevin Rudd or Julia Gillard had ordered, but of course they never did. And so we've had a period of catch up and we have a lot more investment to make, but we will only deter aggression from a position of strength, not weakness. And that's right. uh, the approach that I've taken to this job. What